welcome to the lectures on fundamentals of MIMO wireless communications. Uh, we are currently exploring diversity again. We have seen uh, the selection combining method. Uh, now, we take a look at the next combining method known as maximal ratio combining. Uh, in maximal ratio combining, uh, what we have is uh, again there is a single transmit antenna at the source, there is a single transmit antenna at the source and there are multiple receive antennas at the receiver and uh, these lines, these different antenna lines, they would go to the combiner and there will be an output. So, in each of the combiner branches, uh, there would be some uh, weighing by let us say alpha 1, alpha 2 up to alpha m r. So, these will be the different uh, weight factors that would be given and at the receiver, there would be some kind of combining. So, previously there was a switch and that was going through in the selection combining, but now we do not have a switch, we have a weight and after the weight, there is some kind of addition and it goes through. So, uh, this is the different method of combining and we would term, term it the maximal ratio combining, also referred to as M R C. So, this is the common name, M R C is the common name for this and uh, typically the diagram that was drawn x is transmitted over the channel which is having coefficient h received through one antenna weighed by a certain weight factor, uh, the second antenna again weighed by a certain weight factor and so on up to m r weighed by m r and then there is some processing at the receiver and then what you get is the output y. <coughs> so, the output y can be written as sum of i equals to 1 to m r you could also write it as m for simplicity in, in this particular case is alpha i times h i the ith link h 1, h 2, h m r times x, x is transmitted plus w i, w i is the uh, noise due to that particular branch. So, this weight factor is getting multiplied with whatever is received. <coughs> for selection combining, the combining was done by I star is equal to arg max of gamma i or arg max of mod h i squared for i equals to 1 to up to m r. This is what we did for selection combining, but for maximal ratio combining that is m r c, uh, we combine in a way from which this name derived is uh, we put the weight corresponding to the strength of each of the branch, so that overall S n r is maximized at the receiver. So, in this case what is done is alpha i is set equals to h i conjugate or rather very precisely uh, this is what you are going to find in typical books, where they give you this particular expression which is useful for BPSK or QPSK modulation, but if you are doing higher order modulation, uh, one has to choose alpha i as h i conjugate divided by square root of sum over k h k squared. So, basically it is a normalized coefficient, uh, we do this normalization, uh, so that uh, at the output we get the values uh, which can be easily decoded. So, when you are doing uh, simulations or when you are having an actual receiver, this is what you have to use, but uh, when you are doing error probability analysis, you could do sufficiently with this for uh, QPSK, because the SNR calculation remains the same uh, when we do either of these two things. So, if we get back to y, the received signal y is equal to i equals 1 to m, we are going to write m instead of m r alpha i h i x plus w i, w i is additive white Gaussian noise, this is the channel coefficient, uh, this is uh, ralephated, you can assume it to be ralephated, but it can be any general distribution, uh, which is equal to, since alpha i is equal to h i conjugate, what we have is h i squared sum over i times x plus h i conjugate w. 
Now, this you could also write it as look at this x times i equals 1 to m mod of h i squared plus h i conjugate w. So, this is the received signal. So, at the receiver what we have is sum of all the coefficients of the channel squared. Uh, so, that means, each of the channel gain is getting weighed or when we are adding up the, the signal, we are basically weighing it by the corresponding channel strength. In the previous case, there would have been only one channel gain, but here we are getting addition over all possible uh, channel links that we have. <coughs> so, compared to selection combining, in selection although we had all these branches, uh, one was taking only one of these and we were dropping the signal from the other branches. But what is being done over here, all the branches are being used, but it is used in such a way that you maximize the signal to noise ratio. Now, uh, if you look at it, we are putting the weight of the branch corresponding to the strength of the branch compared to the other branches. So, it is basically the ratio of the strength of that branch over the total signal strength. The advantage of this is if some of the branch is good, you are putting more weight to that. If one of the branch is weak, you are putting less weight to that, because the error probability of this branch will be better than error probability of that branch, but uh, I am not leaving out any, any branch. I am taking it, but simply putting less weight to it and the weight is being made proportional to the channel strength. So, following this, if one has to calculate the signal to noise ratio from this, uh, one would get E of x squared by E of w squared, that means the x e of x squared by e of w squared, uh, but at the denominator you are going to get another term that is sum over h i mod squared and in the numerator you are going to get a square of this term that is sum over h i mod squared whole squared, because uh, you are you are basically collecting sorry here is the sum of i equals 1 to m here are sum of i equals 1 to m. So, when we are calculating the energy, uh, we are calculating basically E of, you have to do E of h i w conjugate sum over i times let us say k h k w i conjugate, because the conjugate of each, this is what is going to give me the power. So, since h i h k are independent. So, we will assume independent that is E of h i h k equals to 0, if i is not equal to k and is equal to 1, if i is equal to k. So, that is the relationship and again for w E of w i w j is equal to 0, if i is not equal to j and is equal to sigma square w for uh, i is equal to j. So, this, this is the assumption uh, that we make over here. So, going by that uh, the, the power is going to be added up only when uh, h i is equal to h k, that means i is equal to k and since this is a function of h, this is dependent on h, we do not actually operate the e on h. So, this particular part does not take into effect, only this comes into effect. So, we have uh, h i h k part and since w i w j e of w i w j is equal to 0 for i not equal to g, j, we basically have uh, sum over i mod h i squared w and an expectation operator, this e comes inside w squared w i squared. So, e of w squared times this summation that is that is the expression that we have over here. And uh, in the numerator in a similar manner, uh, we have the square of this. So, if you if you evaluate this, uh, the S n r expression uh, that one would get uh, would turn out to be the S n r that uh, one would expect uh, would turn out to be E of x squared by E of w squared times sum of i equals 1 to m mod of h i squared. So, that means, uh, this is the gamma bar that we are getting. So, the average power in as in the A w g n channel case times the sum over the channel strength over all the channels in case of selection combining there was only one, here we have added up all the channel strength. And uh, if we are looking at gamma m, so basically this is gamma m the combined due to m r c. Okay. So, 
I could write it as E of x squared by E of w squared times h 1 squared plus E of x squared by E of w squared times h 2 squared plus E of x squared by E of w squared times h 3 squared mod of course, up to E of x squared by E of w squared times h m mod squared. So, this is basically gamma i, gamma 1, this is gamma 2, gamma 3 up to gamma m. So, what we can write this is equal to sum over gamma i, i equals 1 to m, meaning that the S n r that is achieved at the end of the combining is the sum of the S n r of the individual branches. So, gamma 1 is the S n r of the first branch, gamma 2 is the S n r of the second branch, gamma 3 S n r of the third branch and gamma m is the S n r of the mth branch or m r, m r th branch. So, by this particular method one is able to add all the S n r's for the different branches. Now, again if we look at this, uh, this particular one for Rayleigh distribution is chi square distributed with 2 degrees of freedom. Uh, if there are m such terms, so basically it is a chi square distributed with 2 m degrees of freedom and one could write p of gamma m is equal to gamma m raised to the power of m minus 1 e to the power of minus gamma m by gamma bar divided by gamma bar raised to the power of m by factorial m minus 1 for gamma m greater than or equal to 0, where gamma bar is the average S n r of each branch. That means, expected value of gamma i is equal to gamma bar. So, this uh, this way what we have seen is uh, we have the combined S n r as sum of all the S n r's and uh, if you want to calculate gamma m bar the expected value, this will be expected value of sum over gamma i, which would be uh, since all of these are independent we have assumed them to be independent, uh, it would be sum over E of gamma i, which would be sum over gamma bar i equals to 1 to m. So, that essentially turns out to be m times gamma bar. So, what we are seeing is that the average S n r has become m times the S n r of one of the branches. Uh, in case of selection combining just to compare, uh, it was gamma bar and k equals 1 to capital M 1 by k. This is how it was growing, but here there is a linear uh, increase in the S n r because of M r c combining. So, this is the best possible increase in S n r that you can have and uh, hence this, this particular technique is, is quite famous in terms of uh, combining. So, this, uh, this particular technique which is uh, known as the maximal ratio combining, it, it puts weights onto each of the branches and the weights are proportional to the channel strength and in combining it actually uses uh, the h conjugate. So, that when it gets multiplied we get mod h squared along with this particular term and uh, this leads to the situation when we try to calculate the S n r, uh, we get the sum of S n r of the individual branches uh, yielding that gamma m is equal to sum of all the S n r's. The average S n r hence is m times the average S n r of any one of the branches. So, this, this is a huge uh, potential gain uh, that we are having over here. So, <coughs> if we <coughs> go back to some of the previous pictures that we had drawn, uh, yeah, let us let us take uh, not this, yeah. yeah, if we take uh, any of these pictures which could be helpful. So, here uh, we were always writing the crest, but if we now take uh, the maximal ratio combining in this particular figure, uh, the curve would be this signal plus the green signal plus the black signal. So, it will be somewhere here and I will draw it arbitrarily, but it is higher. All I mean to say that at this point it was just the blue, but now it will be this blue plus this green plus this black and so the signal strength would be there. It will be higher than that and the average S n r 
if it is here for all the branches the combined average SNR would be somewhere there which is in this case it is 3 times the gamma bar of each of these uh, of the SNRs. Right. So, this, this is very very interesting uh, result that we have got and uh, the next very interesting thing that we need to calculate is the probability of error. Uh, we have uh, already uh, made the assumption that uh, uh, for this particular course, uh, one has to do uh, digital communication as a prerequisite. Uh, that means, uh, it is expected that uh, you have done some basic work uh, in terms of error probability calculations. Uh, so, we, we are not going to derive the error probability for additive white Gaussian noise in this particular uh, course. Uh, because that would uh, be unnecessarily getting into some, some details. So, we will assume the expression for error probability for uh, certain constellations uh, using which we can derive the error probability in, in these particular cases. Uh, again a reminder like the one we did in the previous case that uh, if you have error probability expression in AWGN that means, when uh, the signal strength is fixed you have a fixed value of SNR. Whereas, in, in this particular case, uh, where your uh, received signal y is uh, h i times x plus w i and then we do certain processing here. So, it is already variable and the S n r that is gamma i that I get is, is random. So, therefore, the probability of error is also random and hence we would be interested in calculating average probability of error. So, we have uh, told earlier in the previous uh, discussion on selection combining, uh, how to calculate probability of error for um, average probability of error. We will use the same technique uh, using the density function that we have derived uh, to calculate the average uh, probability of error in case of MRC and uh, that will give us some uh, good insights into the performance. So, uh, proceeding further uh, for BPSK or QPSK, you could say that Okay, before we, uh, we uh, the q the error probability is q function of root of 2 times the S n r. So, in this case the combined S n r's p d f turns out to be gamma raised to the power of m minus 1 e to the power of minus gamma by gamma bar gamma bar raised to the power of m m minus 1 factorial for gamma greater than or equal to 0. Now, this is true because gamma is E of uh, x squared by E w squared multiplied by mod h squared. Now, mod h squared is greater than 0, E x squared is greater than 0, E w i squared is greater than 0. So, all are greater than or equal to 0. So, we have this uh, gamma to be greater than or equal to 0 and uh, if one has to calculate P b bar that is average bit error rate, one would integrate from 0 to infinity d gamma p gamma because of gamma m m r c right the error probability at a particular S n r. So, what is meant by this is this function this expression gives the probability of error when S n r is this and we are averaging it using this p gamma because uh, the probability of the S n r being a certain value is given by p gamma d gamma and we are saying that gamma ranges from 0 to infinity in this whole range of values we are going to get the average uh, p b. Uh, this expression is a bit uh, cumbersome uh, if we define g to be square root of gamma bar gamma, gamma 1 minus 1 plus gamma bar we are going to get in a term which is pretty complex looking expression m equals 0 to m minus 1 combinatorial of m minus 1 plus m m 1 plus g by 2 raised to the power of m. So, this this gives the average probability of error uh, for MRC combining. Now, uh, this way to calculate the probability of error uh, is uh, not so straightforward, but uh, there are other techniques by which we can do it. So, let us uh, let us take one particular method of doing the error probability calculation. In general, the probability of symbol error, I am talking about a general expression for probability of symbol error can be approximated as alpha m q function of square root of 
beta m times gamma, the particular gamma that we are using. So, this is the uh, probability of error expression uh, for a particular modulation. Let us let us take a rectangular quam modulation uh, depending upon the size of m. So, this alpha m is not the m that we are using for uh, MIMO communications, this is different. Uh, this m is the same as this related to the modulation, this m is indicating the modulation order. This is the modulation order. So, <coughs> please do not get confused with this alpha m and beta m. So, by varying these coefficients, different size of m could be used like one could be QPSK, uh, another could be 16 qam or any such thing depending upon each here alpha m and beta m would be different, here alpha m and beta m <coughs> would be different. So, uh, we have to be careful with that. Uh, we will use the churn of bound. So, by the churn of bound we have q of x can be said to be less than or equal to e to the power of minus x squared by 2. Uh, this is an approximation uh, that we can use, but uh, the end result is if we use this particular method, uh, the answers that we are going to get out of this are uh, pretty nice. So, we can get good results out of this. So, that is why we will be using these approximations and they are not uh, very, very wrong, they hold quite well. Uh, so, we will proceed with this particular expression. So, we can say that P s uh, is equal to alpha m uh, times q of square root of beta m times gamma, in this case it is gamma m r c. So, this is less than or equal to alpha m e to the power of minus beta m gamma m r c by 2. So, this, this, this is the expression that we are using, uh, the churn of bound we are applying here. Now, gamma m r c uh, we will be using. So, that is uh, basically this is equal to alpha m uh, e to the power of minus beta m by 2 times sum over i, i equals to 1 to let us use m r indicating m r number of received branches comma i. So, this is the particular expression uh, that we need to use. Remember that uh, we could also write it as this one. So, basically p s is less than or equal to alpha m e to the power of minus beta m by 2. Instead of writing gamma i, we have i equals 1 to m r mod of h i squared uh, times E s by n naught or P s by, uh, by sigma squared omega. This could also be written as rho, this could also be uh, written as rho. <coughs> or uh, one could also write this as alpha m e to the power of minus beta m by 2 times uh, gamma bar times sum of h i squared i equals 1 to m r. So, one could write this as p s is less than or equal to uh, this thing. And uh, so, this as a function of, uh, this is a function of h. So, it is a function of h vector that means all the all the channel coefficients in case of m r c that means uh, these channel coefficients. So, it is conditioned on these particular channel coefficients. So, that is the whole vector that it is dependent upon. So, what we are interested to find at this stage is p s bar. So, if we have to find p s bar, uh, what we need to do is uh, we have to take the expectation of this over this particular thing. So, uh, if we if we look at this uh, mod of if we take this expression i equals to 1 to m r uh, sum h i squared uh, for m r c this we could as good as write it as h f squared the Frobenius norm of h because it is uh, contains the sum of square of all the channel coefficients. So, this is uh, that we have here and uh, that that is very, very interesting. So, uh, p s we could write it as alpha m e to the power of minus beta m gamma bar by 2 h f squared. And now, this is going to turn handy. So, if we have to take uh, the expectation of this. So, remember e of 
e to the power of minus nu h f squared is given by this this we had derived earlier this particular thing we had derived earlier is given by the product of i equals to 1 to m r. Look at this uh, in our case we have m r in the previous case we had m r m t when h was MIMO, but in this case there is one input multiple outputs it is a vector and m r number of contents in it. So, the um, the r matrix that means the covariance matrix is of dimension m r cross m r. So, this goes to m r otherwise it would have gone to m r uh, m t 1 plus nu times lambda i of r r is the covariance matrix of vec vec hermitian r comes from expectation of vec of h times vec of h hermitian so this is what uh, we have to use over here so nu in our case is uh, basically beta m gamma bar by 2 that's what we have to use uh, in case of uh, identity that means in case of h being independent that means when h i's are all independent uh, if i do this operation back of h would be h 1 h 2 up to h m r times h 1 h 2 up to h m r of course conjugate and then an e operation so what we are going to get is h 1 1 squared h 1 h 2 conjugate and so on and so forth. So, basically the diagonal would be h 1 1 squared h 2 squared h 3 squared and h m r squared whereas, cross diagonal elements would be cross terms uh, for uncorrelated or independent case e of h 1 h 2 conjugate is 0 and so are other coefficients except for e of h i h i squared. So, that means uh, this would turn out to be e of h squared times an identity matrix of size m r and uh, this is equal to 1. So, basically the eigenvalues of them would be 1. So, basically lambda i's are 1. So, in our case uh, we can apply this. So, basically when I take uh, expected value of p s it is basically expected value of this over uh, h f. So, that we could write it as uh, alpha m and then this one pi of i equals to 1 to m r. 1 by 1 plus uh, beta m gamma bar by 2. So, this this particular expression now now if we look at it uh, all this is the same. So, this uh, you could also write it as alpha m times 1 by 1 plus beta m gamma bar by 2 raised to the power of m and we could uh, proceed further that means, we are assuming that all gamma i all gamma i bars are gamma bar that means, the average receive strength in all of the branches are the same uh, that is we have made the assumption gamma i bar is equal to gamma bar. And uh, if uh, we assume that gamma bar is uh, pretty large that means, for large S n r approximation uh, we can say that expected value of p s or p s bar or probability of symbol error uh, we could approximate it as alpha m we are writing the approximate expression uh, times uh, beta m we are saying this is very very large that means, it is larger compared to 1 gamma bar divided by 2 raised to the power of minus m. Uh, what we can compare this is if we have m is equal to 1 that means, if m r is equal to 1 there is only one branch uh, we would have alpha m uh, divided by beta m gamma bar by 2 that means, it is proportional to gamma bar raised to the power of minus 1 and which is true for a CISO case. So, what we are seeing from this expression because we made certain approximation the first one being the Chernoff bound that we made over here and uh, second thing that we used is uh, this uh, expected value of uh, uh, or the uh, or the MGF the moment generating function of Frobenius norm of h that we have used over here uh, that is that is helping us to uh, get this particular expression. So, what we are seeing from CISO where it was proportional to the average probability of error it is proportional to the inverse of average signal strength. Uh, now, it is instead proportional to in case of MRC it is roughly we can say it is inversely proportional to the average signal strength raised to the pi of uh, minus m r 
that means as MR grows the probability of error decreases uh, and it and the order by which it decreases is given by MR which is the number of received antenna branches and uh, we will see later that this exponent is known as the diversity order. So, in summary what we see is because of this kind of combining uh, the probability of error expression uh, is which is inversely proportional to the average SNR uh, raised to the power of um, 1 or, or inversely proportional to the average SNR. What we see it is now inversely proportional to the average SNR raised to the power of MR that means number of receive antennas. So, that means if uh, probability of error previously was uh, something like this in the DBD in the, in the log log scale now the probability of error at a certain value would be much much lower at that particular SNR and that value would be uh, dictated by this particular term. We will we'll see more details of uh, this particular uh, expression in the, in the following lecture in which we are going to analyze the impact of M and uh, we will see what is uh, meant by coding gain and diversity gain in more details. Uh, thanks.